Okay, so today we're going to unbox the Cascade Max Flow Canister Filter. Um, this particular filter, I was able to get one off of Amazon. And it was a pretty good price. I wanted to uh, see what it was all about. I first saw this filter in uh, Phoenix, Arizona at a place called Ocean Floor. They had boxes and boxes of them. And the size of it was something that I thought that, uh, you know, intrigued me. I've seen a lot of the big monster filters, you know, the Eheim 2262, the, uh, you know, the Fubal FX6, the, um, I have a uh, Biomaster 850 over there. So why not give this guy a try and have a look at it and unbox it nobody else has done a video like this on uh, this particular filter i tried to find one so i ordered one up and we're going to unbox it today and then what i'm going to do in a, another video um, the next one is i'm going to have a shootout between this the biomaster 850 and an fx6 and i'm going to compare all three of them the amount of media that goes in each one of them and uh, the flow rates. Um, so let's take a look at the box on this one here. The flow rate is showing 820 gallons per hour. And you can half that. As you know with canister filters, pumps. Um, those are the ideal types of uh, flow rates these will get uh, right from the manufacturer without any media in it. Uh, without running, you know, pipes that go up. Anytime you have a pump and you have it down below the tank or, well, anywhere, and you run a pipe from it, uh, the higher you go up, the more that flow rate goes down. And it goes down by a significant amount. So when you look at this filter right here and you see 820, half that, maybe 850. I mean, I mean 450 or maybe 400 and you can half that but also understand that the bigger the pump uh, the more guts it has to push water so sometimes it's not so much of a drop as you might think but once you get the media in it and everything yeah there's a significant drop so this is the ideal amount of uh, gallons per hour you could get 820 um, and I understand why they have to do that because all other filter manufacturers do that and in order to be competitive well of course they're going to have to um, you know match the gallons per hour look at us ours has more gallons per hour even though really it's the quality of the media that you have in it the amount of media that you have in it um, that really matters in comparison to you know massive flow rates you do want to turn your tank over as many times as you can but if you're turning your tank over as many times as you can and you don't have good biomedia you know with good bacteria and a lot of it um, turning your tank over and over is going to make the water crystal clear but then again at the same time you know the removal of ammonia and nitrite nitrates if you have enough you know anaerobic bacteria in it it won't matter you have to, you know, have good uh, biomedia in them. And that's one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, biohome in this. And uh, we're going to, you know, compare the trays between this, the FX6, the Biomaster that I have in the box over there, see which ones hold the most media, um, and see the overall construction, you know, of, of them. I really love canister filters with different kinds and mechanics uh, that go into, you know, how they work. But there's also a hidden thing on this particular one that I don't understand. And I have looked hell and high water trying to figure out what it does or why it's there. And, you know, on the box, everywhere. And I can't figure out what it's for. So um we'll look into that as well and uh so let's go ahead and get started i've read the instructions trying to find what this hidden thing is and uh, can't find it so let's go ahead and get started 
We'll get up here. This thing is a beast. It's huge. Um, one of the first things that I really like about this canister filter is that it has uh, another little hidden feature. We've got the instructions. And I've already read the instructions. They could be better. Much better. Uh, I don't know if I'm wanting a colored picture book, but um, some very strange packing material. I like it. It's different. It doesn't have any handles, and it sure is a huge filter. But then again, putting a handle on something like this is going to weigh this much is, you know, not the thing you want to do. I mean, you're really going to have to have a hell of a handle on it. It can handle a lot of weight. And of course, we all know that these are plastic. Uh, it's the Cascade Max Flow. Uh, made by Pinplex. I have a few other Pinplex filters. I like them. Uh, they're not the greatest filter. They're not the worst. And right here we have the inlet and outlet for your tubing. And you have a flow adjuster. And this adjusts, you know, how much the, the flow of water goes in your tank. I always keep those on full force. Um, I found that when I use flow adjusters, on um, I got every kind of canister filter made. Because like I say, I, I love canister filters. And um, I found that when I use uh, things like this right here to restrict the flow going into the tank, you come back about an hour later and you put your hand on the filter and it's a little warmer. And you're thinking, wow, I must be really taxing that pump by restricting the flow going into the tank. So I always just let those things go full, full throttle. And, and uh, if I have to restrict the flow going into the tank, I put a sponge filter or something over the outlet, you know, to stop the, um, the flow from being too much for the fish. And we got that. We'll look at these parts first. And let's see, we got some tubing. Looks like two of them. And let's go ahead and have a look at what we have going on inside of the filter. Man, this thing is big. That's another thing that I was uh, that I like about it. And I'll show you a little bit later, but um, at a distance. This thing looks like a shop vac. So, if you gotta sneak it into the house, you know, and try to get past the wife, if you keep it at a distance, got a new shop vac. And, uh, you know, keep things clean, of course. And you might be able to pass it off as a shop vac. But uh, it's big enough. So let's take a look here. We all have, have you know those those issues come on guys and girls too you know girls are really getting into this hobby I love the fact that everybody's getting into this hobby and uh, you know and I've seen seen them having to do the same thing you know with their husbands or boyfriends you know new fish tank stuff and what do you got in the bag Shh, plants Oh, okay, yeah, and we all know we're all part of that club. So, you can easily pass this off as a shop vac if you've got to, and that's one of the great things about this particular canister filter. Let's see, what we have here is a bunch of suction cups, no doubt to hold the intakes and outtakes, intake, outtake pipes. Um, what we have here is our... Let's see. Wow, this is pretty big. Now this particular filter, it says on the front of it that it's good for aquariums up to 250 gallon tanks. Something like that. Uh, much larger, bigger tanks. You wanna know what? Um, 
once you reduce that flow by putting the bowel media in it, by the tubes going, you know, once these tubes start going up, that flow changes. These tubes are about the same diameter in the amount of water that'll go through them, about the same thing as an FX6. And uh, once the water starts going up, the, uh, the gallons per hour goes down. So a tank may be 55 gallons. You can put this on a 55 gallon, I think. And like I say, if it's too much flow, um, you still have this option if you want to try it out. Or you can put um, some kind of a, a sponge over the outtake, which will, you know, stop the uh, aggressive amount of water going through the tank. But this is going to be a little bit too long for most tanks. This here is your spray bar. And, you know, here's my 120. This is much wider than a 120. I would have to cut it. So what I'm going to end up doing is, is I'm just going to put a regular outflow on it, on mine. Because that's a whole lot of, of spray bar. And spray bars are good because you want, you know, agitation in the top of your water. Gets the oxygen down in your water. And, you know, helps to get all the... Uh, um, the bad gas is out and so the more agitation you have on your tank um, it's better and they say that's even better at higher altitudes because at higher altitudes it's harder to get the maximum amount of oxygen you want in your tank uh, here where I'm at we're at a mile high I like to have lots of agitation in my tanks so but I already have a way of, of uh, you know, hang on back filters and stuff like that, causing agitation in the water. Let's see, here's some connectors uh, to connect all this stuff up with. Uh, what do we have ourselves here? This is the intake, of course. Whoops. And it's not bad. All the way around. It's not too wide and it's not too, I like that. That's really good. <coughs> you take on uh, the marine line right here that I have. Um, I think those are too closed. I mean, it still gets a lot of a lot of stuff in there, but it misses a lot of debris. Well, you know, I'll take that back because it's so big. It actually grabs a lot of stuff, but I don't know. I would like to see it bigger. I like the FX6, it's quite wide, but sometimes it's too wide and you get uh, rocks, sand and stuff like that in there and you have to take it and rinse it out. Um, but this is just right. I wish more of them had them just like this actually, so this is nice. And then we have our hoses here, what do we got going on here? Oh boy. Well, I'm going to have to cut that. This hose came damaged. I'm not a big deal. I'm going to have to cut about an inch off of it. That's okay, but, you know, a little bit more quality inspections when they, they do this kind of thing. How did they do that? It must have just been a bad blade they had on there when they cut it. So let's go ahead and move this all to the side, and we'll get on to the main attraction. And we'll have a look at this. Oh boy, it's big. So let's see if we can take this out of here without having an issue. I would move the box around a little bit, but it, this in itself is actually a very heavy filter. And let's go ahead and take a look at the box. Um, let's see if we're in the picture here. Yeah. Um, it's showing that it has the adjustable flow rates. Of course, this removes in and out of the top so that you can, you know, remove the filter 
This is going to be a beast getting it out of your uh, cabinet. Especially if you got it filled like I do with biohome or lava rock or stuff like that. And water, I don't see how you can get water out of it before you try and pull it out of your cabinet. So if you're going to buy this, uh, make sure you got some muscle because I can guarantee you this is going to be heavy. Um, it says right here that these are adjustable. So let's see how far do they adjust. Oh yeah, they're 360. Oh, and it says 360. So. And it shows the different uh, trays that you have here on the top. And it has all the information here. More packaging, um, brackets, and the front. And yeah, you can pass this off at a distance as a shop back. So you know, keep that in mind, everyone, for your significant other. And let's get into the filter itself. I got a chair here, but this guy is so big, I'm going to have to stand in order to get it open. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, to start off with, I'm going to show you that uh, hidden thing that I, I talked about. I've been all over the internet looking, trying to find it. Here on top, let me go ahead and move this to the side. If anyone can comment down below and tell me what this thing is, I'd appreciate it. But on the top here, we have this plug. And I've read the instructions, I know what it does, I know what it's for. And you un unscrew it like this, get it out. There we go. It's got two gaskets on it. And it's pretty tough. So, you know, it's, it's a good piece of, of plastic, good solid. Um, and with the two gaskets on there, uh, no water is going to come out of it. But you use this hole to fill it with because they know it's going to be heavy. Now how you're going to get the water out of it is another story uh, because when it's on, on the filter itself and you look down there, the hole stops pretty much right around the first tray. So if you want to siphon some water out in order to try and move this beast out of your cabinet, you're not going to get much out of it. But you can use this hole, and that's what it's for, if I understand the instructions right and everything I've seen on the internet. That's what this plug in this hole is for, is to put water in it once you've got it under your cabinet. Getting it out of your cabinet, though, is going to be a whole different story. Now, I don't know what this plug is for. It doesn't have a gasket. Goes nowhere, does nothing. In fact, if you stick your fingers in there, you can feel uh, wiring. And uh, that's a mystery to me. It's not made to have water go into this thing. I, you know, I can feel wires in there. I would really have liked to them to put a, a rubber seal on it. I mean, you know, we know how water gets on your filter. Especially when you change it out or you have an oops here or something like that. And uh, so here's this plug, with this hole that has nothing to do with water, with wires in it. And I can't figure out what this hole is for or why it's here. Um, if anybody else can figure it out, I've looked all over the internet. I've read the instructions up and down, even the stuff nobody else will read. Can't figure out what this hole is for. 
So if somebody can figure it out and write in the comments, let me know. It's not a bleeder hole for air because if it was, water would come shooting out of it once you turned on your filter. Um, let's take a look at the bottom. Here we have where your impeller is. Motor, impeller. Uh, somebody will get that joke. One of my favorite YouTubers. But anyway, that impeller goes down into your first tray. It's not something I really like. Maybe I get it if uh, they had made this thicker and stand higher. It's already too big. But um, yeah, it goes down into your first tray. And here's where the water gets, uh, water goes down through here. And then it comes up and goes through here and down. I'll show you in a little bit. But let's go ahead and move this out of the way. So far, my dog all the way down on the couch is enjoying the, the video. Uh, this is the top. These little things go up, upward. Well, there's only one way you could put this one in. On other Pinplex models, um, there are other filters, cascades. Uh, the first one that I had was something like this. And I kept putting it down, thinking that these lock it in. And I couldn't get the lid on. And I can see that they've done something similar here. They got these guys going up. So that's the first. And here's your first tray. Now your first tray has a fine pad in it. I'm going to tell you what I don't like about this fine pad. This hole. For this right here where the impeller goes inside. Because my way of seeing it is the water flows from the bottom up. I like to put all my mechanical filter stuff right down here. I want to put a, a coarse, a medium, and a fine pad on the bottom. But you see, on the tray that will be on the bottom, which is just like this one here, there is no hole there. I mean, no uh, basket, but you'll have that hole. I would like to have fine pads like this that I can get from Cascade without having to cut my own that doesn't have a hole in it so I can put it um, inside of the tray like this and no water comes you know, out of the hole. So I'm going to put on the bottom a coarse pad, a medium pad, and this pad, and this isn't going to work. Um, so yes, that's, that'll be the second tray, nothing in it. Um, you have one of these right here. It screws off, but you will need it on the top one. And the reason that you need it is for that impeller to go in there. I'm going to put all my biomedia in here, and you don't want your biomedia to get sucked up in an impeller. So I get it. That's why you need it. They have that impeller from the top going down into this first tray and you know all the water gets up you know through there so here we have our first tray second tray down move that our next tray and our last tray has a Black coarse sponge in it. And that's it. So I can see what they're doing here. They they want you to put your own media, your own stuff in it, and trick it out the way you want to. You know, pit my filter the way I want to. And uh, yeah, I really would have liked to have one of these without that hole in it. Because this is a good pad. 
and uh, I'll use my own pads, you know, that's got the dimples. I like the dimples. Some people say it doesn't matter. Some, I don't know. It's got dimples, looks nifty to me, so. And the inside of this is, you know, just the inside. 110 volts. This is rated for a tank. It says up to 250 gallons, I think. Um, well, I would want a little bit more than this for a 250 gallon tank. But if you're going to use it as just a sponge filter, you know, to clean up a tank, yeah, this is probably going to be one of the most outstanding filters that you can get size wise you know it's it's one of the big beast filters that's up there with the fx6 it's up there with uh, the eheim 2262 or 1500 xl something like that the eheim but at the same time uh you know even those filters for just one of those for a big 250 gallon we know that's not the case and neither is it with this one now construction wise Boy, that is thin. And not all too... It'll work. It's better than some that I, I've seen. Um, how well do these things fit together? A little bit of a... Looks like this. Let's see here. So dropping them in there, you're going to have to work it a little bit. There is not going to be very much bypass whatsoever. In fact, you know, there, it's tight. So, not much bypass going on there. Four big trays. I'm curious as to how much this is going to hold. Um, I'll probably get some bio home in it now and we'll we'll see so it's going to be one two three trays with bio home oops let's see i've done this wrong it's going to be three trays with bio home and uh one with just your mechanical stuff in the bottom of it so we'll go ahead and uh Fill it up and weigh it and compare it uh, maybe to uh, to other filters in the next video. And we'll do a shootout with, uh, I got a new FX6, I got a new uh, Biomaster 850 over there. And we'll do a little shootout and see which ones are, uh, which holds more, you know, per tray and get a look at them and then once I get them installed to that on that video I'll show flow rates of each one of them even though that's not really a good comparison flow rates because like I say the more biomedia you have in these things the better you do want to turn your tank over more per hour uh, but flow rates you know everybody's hung on the flow rates because you see on every box uh, with these canister filters, you know, our flow rate is this and, you know, good for this tank. Well, it really depends on how you set your, your filter up. Uh, your flow rate is also going to depend on how long those lines are coming out of your, your uh, filter, um, how you pack that filter. And the rule of thumb when it comes to canister filters, the flow rates half them uh, every time. So there's your unboxing of uh, of the uh, Ca uh, Cascade Max Flow. Let's show you the, uh, the instructions here. If I can even open it up, there we go. And forgive me for my first video and the editing and everything. I've moved from VHS to modern technology. Um, Here's the instructions. And you can find these instructions online. 
and you get another little thing here with you know buy all of our media and this is the media and what each one does the different things you could get for it scientifically formulated and combined with pro carb activated carbon uh, yeah, you got all these different types of uh, media that, that they sell. I'll pack it my own way. A um, million ways to pack these things. And in my opinion, one way to do it right. But uh, everyone has their opinion on how to do it. And like I say, I, I like uh, coarse, medium, fine, and the rest, you know, once that water is cleaned to the mechanical, I like the rest of the thing to just be filled with biomedia. Um, from lava rock to uh, my favorite bio home uh, there's a lot of different media that you can put in these things and I like that they didn't put a bunch of plastic bio balls or crazy little uh, uh, cheap ceramic rings they didn't add all that junk in here um, and I like that because they're saying you know go ahead and trick out this filter any way you want and uh, you know, that's a good thing. The construction of it, it's a little bit better than your Samsung 704B. Um, it's nothing as tough as the FX6. Um, and I'm not married to that FX6 either. It's not one of my favorite filters. But it is a tank. And uh, it sits a little bit up on his feet here. And you get your hand underneath it to pull this thing out of the cabinet. But it's going to be heavy. So there you go. The Pimplex Cascade Max Flow. And my unboxing video of it. I hope you enjoyed. And wait up for the next video where we're going to do a shootout with this one. Uh, the Biomaster 850 and the FX6.